Welcome on this Partner Spotlight uh, today with TMSsoftware.com. My name is Bruno Fierens, working for TMS Software, and in the first place I want to thank M. Barcadero for featuring us here. A little background on our company. We were the, one of the first companies to focus on VCL component development. We did this since Delphi 1, so we were there right at the beginning in 95. We were the first company to offer a set of components for the interweb web application framework at the end of the 90s. We were the first company to introduce a VCL ribbon control set. We were one of the first companies to offer a component suite for seamless access to popular cloud services. We were a couple of years ago the first company to offer a set of components for the FireMonkey framework. And we were also the first company to offer a component set that um, exposes native user interface controls on the iOS and Mac OS X user interface. Where we are going to, we will continue, of course, to support, enhance and extend our product portfolio. We continue the research and development to create innovative components and we continue to focus on making the developer do more with less code. First of all, a brief introduction on our components before we go to live coding. And I wanted to uh, organize this in the different product categories that we have. VCL components for web application development, interweb components for web application development, cross-platform application development with FireMonkey components, cloud access with cloud service clients, business logic developer tools, and .NET components. Among the VCL components, here are a couple of our more popular component suites. TMS Component Pack, meanwhile, almost 400 VCL controls, including grid uh, scheduling and planner controls, syntax highlighting memo, a WYSIWYG uh, syn uh, editor, uh, docking toolbars, ribbon, navigational controls, advanced edits, automatic uh, application updater, and many, many more. If you need diagramming and flowchart capabilities in your application, we offer the TMS Diagram Studio. If you need to access devices via serial communications, you can consider TMS Async. And if you have needs for charts of all kinds in your application, there is the suite of charts, TMS Advanced Charts. Visually, here are a couple of these, uh, the Grid, Planner and a Rich Text Editor. For web application development, there are various interweb component products. One of these is TMS Interweb Component Pack, almost 80 controls, uh, including grid, calendars, rich text editor, navigational controls, menus, and many more. For scheduling web applications, there is the TMS Interweb Planner. If you want to integrate Google Maps and Google Geo services in your web applications, we offer TMS Interweb Web GMaps. And finally, for fast client-side rendered charts and gauges, there is the TMS Interweb HTML5 control set. Visually, here are some of these displayed Google Maps integration, charts, navigational controls, and of course, grids. Cross-platform application development with FireMonkey. The TMS pack for FireMonkey, we started working on this almost four years ago now. And it meanwhile has um, about 70 controls, including grid, calendar, rich text editor, navigational controls, menus, syntax highlighting editor, instrumentation controls, and much more. For charting needs in your cross-platform applications, there is TMS Charts for FireMonkey, for Google Maps integration, TMS WebG Maps for FireMonkey, and if you want to access the native operating system UI controls for iOS, you can use TMS ICL, and for Mac OS X, you can use TMS MCL. And a couple of screenshots to demonstrate this. You see the signature capture, the grids, rich text editor, calendar, table view, and drop-down pickers. 
cloud service clients are offered for our four platforms, VCL DMS Cloud Pack, for FireMonkey DMS Cloud Pack for FireMonkey, for web applications DMS IntraWeb Cloud Pack, and for .NET applications, both web and WinForms or client applications, there is TMS Cloud Pack for .NET. And here you can see an overview of popular cloud servers that are meanwhile supported in these different cloud packs. Fifth category is the business logic developer tool, starting with TMS Aurelius, which is our ORM for Delphi that goes hand in hand with TMS Data Modeler, allowing you to uh, visually model your uh, databases. And the Data Modeler tool can automatically generate Aurelius classes from your model. And if you want to take this ORM application to a multi-tier architecture, TMS XData comes in and uh, gives you a multi-tier ORM um, application development tool that uh, is based on fast HTTP, HTTPS communication with uh, the REST protocol and JSON data going back and forth between client and server. If you just want to make an existing data set uh, accessible in a multi-tier environment, then TMS Remote DB is for you. And here you can see the databases, the various databases that are supported by our ORM data modeler and XData. Finally, last category are the .NET components, where the VMS Flexel.NET is our .NET flagship product, offering you a high performance and feature rich access to XLS and XLSX files without the need to have Excel installed and allows you to generate reports in XLS, XLSX PDF and HTML file formats. Cloud Access is offered for .NET applications with TMS Cloud Pack for .NET and for .NET based web application development we have the TMS ASP.NET component pack. And here you can see um, a Flexel in use on mobile devices and the Flexel Grid Viewer. So that was a brief overview of our um, most important uh, component sets, but we want to spend the majority of time with live coding uh, using our ribbon control and our recently introduced rich text editor. And uh, I wanted to make use of this uh, time to also introduce some um, new developments that are going on here at TMS. So here we are in our familiar Delphi XC7 environment and for the demo of today we will use components in the first part from the TMS component pack. You can see the packages installed here and in the second part from the FireMonkey component pack. To start with we will create a uh, ribbon application so we select from the repository here under Delphi project TMS forms that's what you get when you have installed the component pack and we will select an office 2007 ribbon application this is a VCL application so of course we enable the VCL framework to be used automatically for us is this application created that, con that contains a toolbar uh, the ribbon with several pages. We don't need this toolbar. Uh, and then here the application menu that you can edit via this uh, non-visual component, but we will not use it um, in today's demonstration either. And we have two uh, non-visual components that control the style of the ribbon and our toolbar. For this application, today we will select the Windows 8 style like this, Windows 8, and we will drop a rich editor, the TMS rich editor on the form, and let's make this control client aligned. And as we want to manipulate the rich editor a little bit, we will add many of the 
pre-built ribbon toolbars for this uh, rich editor this way. We have a clipboard um, toolbar. We will add an extra page. Let's call this the edit page in the ribbon. And we will call this one the format page. And though we add um, the paragraph ribbon toolbar and we will also add the font ribbon toolbar to this page. Let's add another page which will be the insert page and here we can add yet another pre-built um, toolbar, the insert toolbar that allows us to insert pictures, hyperlinks, special uh, characters. So uh, what we do next is connect the toolbars to our uh, rich editor like this and also the insert toolbar like this. And as you might have noticed, we have not written a single line of code yet. So let's see what this already gives us as a result. Here we have our um, ribbon-based uh, rich text editor. And we can start adding text. And as we have some text, we can start to apply formats, change fonts, etc. Uh, like this, let's select some uh, random fonts. And we can, of course, change colors, background color. And why not the alignments? Let's add some list element here select these items and let's add arrows on this uh, list and why not um, insert now uh, some pictures for example this one is added we can immediately size this uh, picture in the edit control and add text together with it. Um, let's add a hyperlink for example this part of text and we insert a hyperlink here and this automatically becomes a link to the website and we can also add trademark sign etc. So without writing a single line of code we have already added um, some nice functionality for a ribbon based um, editor application. Now I want to uh, take this one step further and uh, I want to show you auto correction in the editor. And to have this, um, well, actually, I will add it by um, code. So that means that I will move to the constructor of the form here, and I will add some auto correction pairs like this auto correct add. And here I can do, for example, alphabetical autocorrection, but I can also use this to save time to allow me to enter some uh, abbreviation and it will automatically complete it for us. So if I type something wrong now, it will correct it automatically to uh, the, the correct word. If I type this um, 
abbreviation it will automatically expand it. Let's take this now one step further and here I'm entering the area of sneak preview where we will add a spell checker. So we have this ADB Rich Editor spell check component. We set it to active. I will now save my project as of course this spell checker needs a dictionary and I have made sure that in this folder there is a um, dictionary ready. Like this. If we have a look at the language default language configuration of the spell checker component, uh, you can see that here uh, there is one dictionary English uh, configured. So with um, this spell checker uh, assigned, this spell checker can now be used to do automatic spell checking or correction um, on the rich editor. And I can do this from the event um, on correct words. This event is triggered for every word that gets added to uh, the rich editor. I will add some uh, more control. Let's add a checkbox that allows me to choose if I want autocorrect yes or not. Okay, so here. I have added this checkbox and now depending on the state of this checkbox I will do either um, simple spell checking or I will add auto correction based on the spell check engine. So if it's checked I do auto correction and that can be done this way. I invoke the spell check engine and ask the first suggestion based on the word that is uh, that was just entered. If this first suggestion is some real word and it's different from the word that was originally entered, that means that our spell check engine has found a replacement for some word that was typed incorrect. If I have no um, autocorrection enabled, I just want to indicate uh, if some word is valid, yes or no. And that I can do with a simple validate call on the word that was entered. And um, I return this by the error parameter of this event that is set according to the result of the validate call on the spell checker. So if I did everything correct, that should start working now. Okay. And now um, I type this word, it's automatically corrected. Let's type another word wrong and I think I have not yet enabled it's active, okay. So with this spell checker now on the form I can do uh, start spell checking on the rich editor and I will do this from the event on correct word which is the event handler that gets triggered when a word is entered in the rich editor and here I want to do uh, two things either indicate that there is a spelling error or uh, do automatic correction and let's add a checkbox to control whether I want this um, spell check just spell check or auto correction and this checkbox will control this so here I do if 
checkbox one checked that is the case of auto correction otherwise we will do simply um, indicating that a word is misspelled so if it's um, checked I call the function of the spell checker which is the function first suggestion and that gets a suggestion for a correct spelling for a word if if there is a mistake if there is no mistake it will return um, an empty string or of course it, if it's different from the word if it's it only makes sense to do this if it's different from the word that was already entered if it's different then I set the entered word to uh, the first suggestion of the spell checker if I do just checking I can call the validate call and if this is different from validated that means there is an error so let's see if this is doing what it is supposed to do and now I enter the word test you can see that I get these red curly lines under the text indicating there is something wrong if I now enter a word if I now select autocorrect and enter the word amphetamine and I enter it you can see that I get autocorrection to the spelling with the letters PH now before if going to fire monkey let's take this a little step further where we will add um, a text I just need a function here to add some text file with some uh, sample text with um, different spelling mistakes like this and let's um, add another page which we will call the proofing page and so I insert the proofing ribbon toolbar that I also assign to the rich editor like this and so um, next I will add a um, spell check correction panel which is this panel let's make this uh, right aligned like this so it integrates in this um, editor so let's see what uh, is happening now and I need to do one more thing I need to also assign the spell checker to both this uh, pane and the proofing uh, toolbar so I should be good to go now to uh, test this so I run this application okay and first of all load this text that has some intentional uh, spelling errors I go to the proofing tab and press here uh, spell check to perform spell checking and as you can see it has automatically um, underlined text with red curly lines where it found mistakes if I now move to the pane that allows me to uh, apply the correction I can walk through the errors in the text and apply changes where appropriate so uh, this way I can do the full uh, spell correction of my document like this and this is a word that okay this is the one that I need and I can go on uh, to correct the full uh, document here
Let's take this uh, one step further, introducing uh, yet another sneak preview. And for that, I will add some uh, extra button and an extra component, a non-visual component, which is the PDF IO component. So it's dropped on the form and I hook it up to the rich editor. And from this button here, I will save it to PDF. Then I can do it quite simple. There's just the save method to call. And I will select this folder where I want the output to be created. And let's call it sample.pdf. So the only thing I needed to do was drop this non-visual component on the form, hook it up to the rich editor and uh, call the save function of this component. So final step in this VCL part. We will load the same text just for the sake of having some text, but I will apply some formatting so that at least we see uh, not uh, text that is everywhere the same, that we have some uh, variation at least. And let's make some text a little bit larger and maybe we can uh, choose yet another font, something like this, a little bigger. Okay, and let's go to the edit tab and press save and it has created a PDF file now. If we open now this sample.pdf that was created here, this is the result of this sample. So almost no code to write to also reach this result. So that was the VCL part. Let's move now to the fire monkey part. And here we select a new fire monkey application. And we can do exactly the same thing here. We have the ADV rich editor component. This one. And we also have toolbars ready to use toolbars for um, our rich editor. We have the formatting toolbar. These toolbars look like um, classic office toolbars. And we have also an edit toolbar. We can select if we want some buttons uh, that should not be uh, visible, uh, we can select what controls are available uh, on this toolbar and what not. We connect the rich editor. Here under options, we can enable or disable any um, button on this toolbar. And here, I will add another component, which is the RTFIO component, which is a component that will create a rich text from um, the content of the rich editor. So this is our FireMonkey application for the ease of use and for the, for the convenience of this presentation. We keep this in Windows, but we can target exactly the same way uh, Mac OS X, Android or iOS and exactly the same components, same behavior, same API, same look and feel, same features as the VCL one and we can select different styles for text insert uh, lists for example etc etc 
So if we would want to export it here to a uh, rich text, we can, for example, uh, simply hook up the rich editor IO component and then call TMS FMX rich editor RTF IO save to the folder where I'm working sample.rtf and having done that I will um, make it a little more interesting by um, loading a demo file in this uh, rich editor like this So now we have some more interesting uh, text in this rich editor. I ex export it to RTF. And let's go have a look in this uh, folder now. Here. Here I should have sample.rtf. And here you can see WordPad uh, with the file that was uh, generated from uh, our rich editor. So that showed us that in uh, FireMonkey we can do uh, almost identically what we did in VCL and um, achieve a lot of results with very, very little code. And that brings us to the conclusion of this presentation of today, uh, where there is now, I think, plenty of time for your questions and answers. Great presentation, Bruno, and great comments coming back from the attendees. Uh, I especially love seeing the the rich text component for FireMonkey. I uh, had many requests uh, since almost the beginning of FireMonkey for a rich text component, and here it is. There it is. This was just great. Several people have also, not this morning, have asked about uh, spell checking. So it's great also to see spell checking uh, uh, coming in. So. Let's get to the questions that have come in. First, uh, Ian uh, just said, thank you very much. Great components with great support. Richard also said, I recommend TMS software components. They do the job. The price is excellent as well as the support. Thanks. Um, Jose was asking, do you have components for, uh, for asynchronous? Or, or, or I guess... There were a couple different ones about uh, different socket protocols and so on. Yeah, for um, the SIP uh, protocol, uh, unfortunately, at this time, we do not have uh, components. Okay. Okie dokie. Let's see. Um, and then Rafael was asking, does TMS component pack supports FireMonkey? And you answered that you have... A separate FMX pack, right? Let me go over to uh, bring up the TMS homepage. So for everybody, over if you just go to tmssoftware.com, you'll see the the component sets, components, FireMonkey components separate, and all the different components along the way. So it's pretty easy to to navigate and also uh, read the news on the TMS software blog. So. Richard's asking if 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 the dictionary is a simple text file, how big can it get before performance starts being an issue? I'm just looking it up here, and uh, right now for English we are using um, a dictionary file of uh, approximately 2.5 uh, megabyte, um, and uh, with this size, um, it is. Um, not holding back typing, so uh, it um, can um, do the spell checking while you type without any uh, performance issue. Okay, I'm just typing the answer into that one. Okay. And uh, just going through again some of the the components here is it, as you click on each one, and it's great, you can hover over to get kind of a, a additional information so uh, lots of and especially here the the uh, 
iOS component wrappers direct to the native controls and for Mac OS X as well for FireMonkey. So lots of uh, components to explore both on the VCL side and the FireMonkey side. And for me, I think also important because we get asked, what about building web apps? And we have IntraWeb uh, as, a, as an install as part of Rad Studio, uh, Delphi C++ Builder. Uh, to have all these add-on components to really flesh out uh, web applications you want to build. Uh, Alf's just asking, is multi-threading used for spell check lookups? Uh, we have a, a we have a, a synchronous and an asynchronous mode. Uh, so in um, asynchronous mode, uh, we indeed use multi-threading. Um, and that uh, mode is uh, used um, um, preferably when you want to spell check large documents. If you want to perform uh, spell checking as you type, uh, then we use, and that's also what you have seen in the demo, then we use uh, the synchronous mode. But the engine itself has the two modes. Okay. If I could ever type, it must be early here in Scotts Valley. Uh, okay. Okay, got that. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, Nina's asking, do you have tables? I'm not sure if she means to, do you have grids? Because you have grids. Boy, do you have grids. Uh, so Nina. Yes, we have, we have grids for, uh, I think, every platform. Um, that uh, Delphi supports, so going from VCL to IntraWeb to uh, FireMonkey cross-platform. Uh, we have uh, grid components for all these platforms. Um, if uh, we also have Flexel that um, is able for both VCL and .NET that is able to manipulate uh, tables in Excel files if um, this uh, person is referring to uh, tables inside the rich editor, uh, at this point that f a particular feature is not yet added. Uh, this is quite complex, uh, but the core of uh, the engine is uh, built uh, for extendability with uh, table support, so that is uh, on our to-do list. Um, to uh, bring it in uh, one of the future uh, versions. Okay, and and the follow-on was about uh, in the editor. So, okay. Okay. Yep. So I type that answer in. Um, Randall is saying I use the TMS search web component pack controls. I love them, but a tutorial would be helpful. Is there a tutorial? Uh, for using in the interweb components or a video? Well, actually, um, we have a um, demo application uh, included with the uh, interweb components. Uh, if you go to Component Pack Pro, um, that includes, um, yes, this one, this, that includes a uh, features demo and uh, on this uh, features demo, uh, in particular the grid that is of course the, the most, the grid, the, the component that has uh, the, the widest feature set, uh, there are about uh, six or seven, eight demos that uh, will demonstrate uh, particular users like, for example, uh, master detail, um, grid in grid configuration, uh, with this uh, intraweb and grid. And while we are here, I can also uh, mention uh, this is the continuous scroll that you see right now, which is an asynchronous scrolling uh, component that scrolls as you go. So it loads items as you scroll through the list. And so uh, an, another sneak tip of what we have in development is a grid that will uh, feature this um, not only continuous scroll but also uh, that will be uh, built upon responsive web um, 
architecture. Uh, we have that coming up in uh, most likely this quarter. Okay. Um, there's a question uh, in the Flexel components. Can you add? Can we add customized formulas not no normally supported in Excel? Um, writing code. as far as I know, not. Uh, but our specialist uh, Adrian Galero, who is the product manager on Flexel, I see that he's also listening. I'm not sure if he can tune in. Uh, Let's see if I can find him. Oh, uh, oh. First person on the list. Oh, right on the list. Okay, because oh, it's lowercase. That's funny. So uh, let me make. Uh, Okay, sure. Let's see if he's got a microphone. Adrian, or can you hear us? Oh, you have a microphone. That's a good question. Um, well, maybe he'll come in in a moment. There was a question, Adrian, about... I see. Flexel. Hi. I see that he actually... There he is. Yeah, Adrian, Hi. I promoted you to an organizer so you could uh, talk. There was a... Nina had a question about can you do custom formulas, I guess, in code or uh, in for Flexel um, that are not normally Excel. Hi, uh, can you hear me? Uh, sorry, wait a second. Yeah, we hear you. Uh, do, do, do you hear me? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Uh, yes, uh, the purpose of custom formulas, of course, you can the use and define any formula you want and you can use it in the recalculation. Okay. Okay. So, yep, excellent. Um, okay. I'll uh, I'll mute it for a moment but uh, just in case. Um, I see different components that deal with internet communication. There are also general internet components like F uh, I guess FTP, HTTP, and so on. You know, Bruno. So uh, for now, for um, FT for FTP or SMTP, we do not have uh, components. Uh, we do have HTTP, HTTPS um, that can be used for uh, FireMonkey applications as well and uh, this can be found in TMSX data. So if you go on the website uh, in the left side under developer tools and uh, from there you will find uh, TMSX data. So this um, correct, yes. So this uh, offers uh, HTTP, HTTPS. Um, sorry, I'm wrong. Uh, this is actually this builds upon this HTTP, HTTPS that is in TMS Sparkle. That's on the developer's tools page. That is the um, that is the framework that implements this uh, HTTP, HTTPS, and can be used uh, from all platforms um, that are supported by FireMonkey. Excellent. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, the cloud components. Uh, I, I used one of them. I, I, I used the, I think it was Google Calendar. Uh, let me go back to the cloud. Uh, let's see, where do I, where do I find? Here it is, cloud. You find that under, uh, under VCL components or cloud pack fire monkey, okay, yeah. yeah. Um, where did I? So that's the FireMonkey version, and then I can go. And then, oh, sorry. So go ahead. You uh, you can click Windows only version. Uh, the okay, that's the one. Yep. That's the VCL uh, Cloud Pack. I'm trainable. It's, yeah, I can just have to. Yeah, that was the FMX. That's the FMX Cloud Pack, and then for VCL, it's this one. Yeah, I used some of these myself in a demo a few weeks ago. Uh, I was going to, uh, we were talking about uh, connecting to services of all kinds, and, and I mean, we have the, the raw REST client library components, but here, everyone, 
uh, there's pre-built support, uh, you know, for all these, and I suppose more to be added systems that you want to hook together. Just uh, much easier once you put in your account information and so on. It's just pre-built for you. Uh, I suppose if you want to spelunk underneath and see how to do it yourself, but why? This is what the power of components are about: is to you need to get to Instagram or your or you know your Google task list or Google Ma Gmail or whatever. Uh, it's all built for you, which is great. Um, okay, let's see. Christian's asking. It was about. It's going back to the R. TF or the rich edit. The TFMX rich editor component stored the text in .rte format. .rt or .rtf? Maybe it's a typo. No, that's uh, the .rte format is uh, our own proprietary file format uh, for storing uh, this uh, information. So, so it's just uh, the the way we internally store it. Um, but as I uh, have shown, we can from there export to uh, HTML, RTF, or um, PDF, or just plain text, um, these things. Yep. Yep. Okay. And, okay, so that was asked twice. All right, great. Not sure. Let's see. Well, uh, Alfonso is asking about TMS Remote DB and uh, and, and Data Snap. I'm, I'm not sure if he's asking for. It says, what are the advantages of TMS Remote DB? Maybe versus Data Snap is using on Data Snap. So, do uh, you have any thoughts about when developers should use and what they should use Remote DB for? Um types of applications or architectures? What I think here is that um, we have built this uh, TMS Sparkle layer, which is an HTTP HTTPS uh, layer, and uh, this HTTP uh, layer uh, uses the latest uh, HTTP sys um, on uh, Windows, which offers um, fast or good performance, and uh, so as it is uh, so uh, closely linked to this uh, high performance HTTP layer, uh, I believe that for um, high performance multi-tier connections, um, it can bring a uh, performance advantage. Yep, great. I'm trying to type that, so at least a terse answer. Um, Alf is asking, do I need a separate PDF component or driver to produce PDF files, or is that included in the internal driver? So that was part of a sneak preview of what's coming, uh, so that will be uh, built in. So uh, there will be no um, separate things to install or to uh, purchase or whatever, uh, so that's a built-in uh, PDF generating a library uh, that is uh, used from the rich editor, but that will also be used from uh, several other uh, components. Great. Yep. Uh, Eduardo was just saying TMXX data is integrated with TMS Aurelius, so the object serialization and database persistence at server side is very integrated. Okay. I think we had. Uh, Aurelius, in, in one of the code rages, I don't, I don't know if it was code rage 7 or 8, I think that's when it uh, it was demoed before, but I'll have to go back and find that link. Um, as far as I know, it was uh, 8. Yeah, so everyone can go back to code rage 8 if you want to take a look more at the object relational mapping uh, uh, technology, Aurelius, really good stuff. Um, Uh, Christian's asking more, I guess, about the rich editor uh, does not use native editors, right? This is your own rich edit component set, right? Correct. So um, we indeed um, developed this uh, rich editor as um, an, um, 
a fully cross-platform component that is on one side uh, a full VCL uh, component without any um, links to uh, anything of the operating system and on the FireMonkey side that's the same thing so that means that the same set of code uh, is used among the four platforms that FireMonkey is supporting. There is actually a blog article that explains a little bit the architecture um, of this component. Uh, David, if you go to block and you should see the last, I believe it's the last block uh, entry that explains um, the architecture of the component. That also means that as it's uh, the same architecture for all these platforms, yes that's the article, um, that also means that um, files can be used on uh, any of these platforms, so they are also interchangeable between uh, VCL applications and FireMonkey applications. Uh, Elf Sassing, uh, can the PDF component be used to print forms? Can you create forms? I, I see that, sh yeah, that should be feasible to, uh, that should be two lines of code, I believe, to uh, achieve that. Okay. And we've got just, uh, well, we've got a few more minutes here. Okay. Um, Alfonso saying he's, he's creating an application, great use of TDB planner, uh, misses more examples and more documentation. And there are about, uh, I believe, 32 or something uh, samples on our planner. So I'm not sure if you um, if you have that one. If you go to the page, uh, the second entry, I believe. Yes. I'm the uh, I'm the browser clicker guy. No problem. It's the easiest thing I have to do today. Oh, sometimes for some reason it's me on my side. Okay, so uh, if you go to sample applications, yep, uh, thirty. Uh, okay. and there you go. Thirty-one. Yep. Thirty-one. You can yep. download these, and also in the upper right corner of this page, you will find the link to the PDF developers guide, okay. uh, which I believe is over hundred pages of. Um, under support product manual, yeah, that's the one. No, one of the great things I, I I'm I'm not I'm not here as the, you know, as the cheerleader or whatever. I I am I am a cheerleader of uh, programming in general, but I love the fact that for almost all, if not all, of the component sets and the products, there's trials. The documentation is right there, so if you're even thinking of purchasing or using, you can look at the manual, you can see the samples, uh, you can see what uh, the trial downloads are right there, so you can try the, these products out. And, and if you're not sure if it has a certain feature, just download the product manual and, uh, and read through and see, does it have all the parts that, uh, that you need? Maybe I could be a, a marketing or salesperson. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. We we'll talk after after the session. <laughs> there we go. Um, <laughs> let's see. I mean, I'm going to try. There's been so many great questions. I want to make sure that I didn't. I've turned off show answered questions so I can see if I uh, missed anything. Uh, TMS uh, interweb grids are great. Randall says. Um, let's see. Don't, do not forget you can send support emails to TMS. Yes, you can, and they respond. It's great. Uh, uh, okay, Alf likes that you're still supporting some of the older versions. Uh, uh, Nathan's asking, does Flexel, maybe this is for Adrian, support uh, tabbed worksheets? So, Adrian, you can see yes, the question. Does. Go ahead. It does? Yes. Okay. I, uh, yes, of course it does. Excellent. Okay. 
think I'm catching up here. Let me just ask you about, we have this EMS JSON um, back-end mobility service that's part of XE7. Uh, Christoph is asking, do you have something? And I know there's there's the, you know, for the the T DB remote, you also have JSON support. Is it a combination or is there a pack that I can point Christoph to for sort of that EMS JSON HTTP uh, back-end business applications? Not sure if it would be a combination of um, DB or I guess X data and remote. It's not. Uh, um, so with um, X data, you can uh, build your own servers, but um, as um, I believe it's uh, Alf who was asking this is asking about EMS in particular. Um, at this point, we do not have some client functionality for EMS, but I, as far as I understand and are aware of, uh, this is fully supported in XC7 and working well, so um, I would uh, should suggest that uh, what you can use out of the box with XC7 is already great. Yeah, so you could use the REST components to talk to your REST server that you build. Doesn't matter what the REST service could be a REST service like a cloud service from Amazon or whatever, but you could build a REST service with uh, TMS X data and uh, and, and then consume it with the REST client. Yes, yes. It's REST client libraries use the REST debugger to test it out and so on. Yeah. Let's see. Is there a way to import uh, Windows RTF files into the rich FMX FMX rich editor? Uh, this is something in development. Everyone who has looked at the RTF spec uh, will know what a daunting task this is, uh, but it is something that we are working on and uh, losing hair with uh, right now. Got it. Now I, uh, yeah, whenever you talk about rich text and people say, uh, Oh, it should be easy, and it's everywhere, and, and then you look at the Windows thing. Yep, but it, it's great to have uh, TMS have the rich component. Uh, I'll have to go back through some of the other skill sprints. Uh, there was one developer in particular that does educational software and needs rich edit and needs spelling, so i got to go find his question again and send him an email to point him to uh, to the solutions that you have. and. Because he needed cross-platform, he he does educational type software for for kids, and and he needed that across all the four platforms. So uh, he'll be able to purchase the components and do it. Um, Rafael's asking if you have any discounts uh, for people. I, we never we didn't set up anything specifically. I guess contact uh, TMS Sales and see what if you send uh, today a nice and friendly email to Nancy. Uh, who's uh, responsible for sales here, uh, we will do our best to offer something. Vladislav is asking about uh, C++ builder support. He asked specifically about Cloud Pack and some of the other component packs. Um, I know the VCL is Delphi and C++ builder, right? Uh, is what? Yes, that's correct. So uh, it's uh, one of the few exceptions where at this moment we do not yet have C++ support, and that's for specific uh, technical reasons. Uh, in case of uh, the cloud pack for FireMonkey, uh, for the Windows target uh, in FireMonkey, we meet at this moment um, the Chromium web browser, and we had uh, technical problems to make that work with C++. And, um, as I understood, that problem will be solved in uh, XC8, so uh, as soon as this, that technical issue is um, no longer present, we will support C++. Yep. And yeah, we're, we're always working. I, I, I know that we've supported the IE runtime, so you're using the Chromium runtime? What is it? 
Call me Marine Time Extension Facility, CREF. Is that what it is? I, I lose track. Yes. Yeah. Yes, that is uh, what we are using. Okay, excellent. Yeah, no, I had played with that. Uh, there was a T-Chromium component for Delphi for a while, open source project. I'm not sure whatever happened with that, but uh, it allowed you. And using Chrome uh, APIs, you know, you can find Chrome all over the place, so it's a good thing. Um, Marco is asking about the generated PDF. Um, can, you, can you explain again what you were doing? And the rich editor uh, is one part component, but then some of the, I guess you were forward looking and showing some other demonstrations of things to come, right? Um, I'm not sure if I understood the question uh, yeah. correct. Marcos, he's, he's, uh, he says the generated PDF was not really the same as the rich editor content formatting was off. Um, okay. And yes, yes. Go ahead. Uh, this is indeed uh, not yet 100% perfect. Uh, that's why we have not released it yet. Uh, so yes, we know that there is some more fine tuning to do. And uh, once that's uh, ready, it um, can go for release. Excellent. Um, Oren has a question. How often do you come out with updates and bug fixes? That's a little bit uh, depending on uh, the product and the type of uh, problems uh, that are being reported. Um, I give an example of the TMS component pack, um, the VCL pack that has about 400 components, so the, we are constantly working on it and uh, trying to um, address issues that um, users report. Um, so um, we have about two weekly to three weeks, four weeks maximum uh, release cycles on that uh, product. Um, so it depends a little bit on the product and it depends a little bit on severity of uh, bugs reported. If um, someone is reporting a severe, a severe bug, uh, we try to uh, fix it within a week, for example. Yep, and Vladislav says thanks for the presentation. Uh, Shankar is asking, uh, is XData the same idea or same as Datasnap? No, it's not really the same. Um, X, the, the very reason for doing XData is for uh, enabling us to have a multi-tier uh, solution for creating ORM applications. So, um, the, let's say the, the original goal uh, is already different from uh, DataSnap. And it uh, and then you you mentioned that there's the TMS Aurelius, which is the object relational mapping technology that you can also. I've got the pages up now, and you can find more information about some of these uh, by clicking on the developer tools link on, on the TMS software product page, and you'll see. It's nice. You can. It's really cool. You can hover over and see you know information, and then expand it and go. The other thing I wanted to note at this point is that on mo almost all the pages and product pages, there's the documentation, sample applications, and links to the trial. So one of the great things I like about what TMS software does is if you're not sure you're reading some of the marketing materials, reading the blogs, and so on, ultimately go and download the manual and read through the manual and when you're wondering, does it have a certain feature? How does it work? Is it easy to call the interfaces? I, I think it's a great, great model of not only marketing and selling the products, supporting them, but giving people the look into the products and try them and the documentation. Uh, and then, of course, uh, making it easy for them to purchase them. So that's very cool as well. Um, this is a general question by Dwayne. You know, when we make changes in the compiler, when their interface changes or the compiler changes something in the virtual table or when we went to Unicode and so on, there's 
there's always times where our technology partners uh, need to release updated versions. But I think TMS, do you ship source code to all or most of the component packs? Well, all our products uh, ship with source code. So actually, we do not sell any product without source code. Um, there's one exception, which is the TMS data modeler, but that, of course, is an application and not a set of components. But if we talk about components, uh, we only sell, sell components with full source code because we believe that um, every developer really deserves uh, and should have the source code if he buys uh, a component. So um, unless something changes in the um, underlying component framework that we use, uh, this source code is uh, mostly compatible between Delphi versions. In the VCL, uh, we have a pretty good uh, history of uh, compatibility between uh, releases. Uh, I don't remember in the, in the last couple of um, releases that there was any change required on the BCL side and on the FireMonkey side um, things have also dramatically improved there um, ensuring that um, while there is never a guarantee but and ensuring that uh, the changes between versions um, remain small. Um, other than this um, we um, try to have our releases uh, always as uh, short as possible after um, the release of a new Delphi version. Um, for us, it's the most work is uh, updating all our installers uh, because our automatic installer, of course, need to take account of uh, the new uh, compiler location of this compiler etc etc and so uh, given the amount of products that we have uh, that's of course uh, quite some effort to do uh, you will understand that it uh, takes um, a lot of work and testing uh, before we can um, create a new uh, product distribution with support for a new IDE but typically our experience shows that after a new release of Delphi we have in about two to three weeks all our uh, products covered. Yep. Uh, there was a question here about um, are the fire monkey is the fire monkey work and the VCL work happening? I, I'm paraphrasing at the same time, or is there different schedules for updates, fixes, and so on? Do do both framework support things have uh, same pri priority for us? Um, both VCL and uh, FireMonkey have the same priority, so it's not the case uh, that we uh, give priority to one platform over another. Uh, with respect to uh, the TMS component pack, as I explained, we have about every two to three weeks um, a release planned, and uh, the customers can see the um, tentative next release date all the time on their uh, My Products page. For the TMS pack of FireMonkey, um, we have an, an, a simple um, system where uh, every Friday the team sits together, um, overlooks all the changes, fixes that have happened in the last week, and then we make a judgment of how critical uh, these things are, how many users are, are affected or are waiting for uh, some uh, change, fix, whatever. And so uh, we decide uh, every Friday if uh, we should release an update, uh, yes or no. So um, that is uh, being handled on a weekly basis. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to copy um, a link to YouTube. There was a, uh, will you do a session on TMS Aurelius, and uh, it was already done uh, in Code Rage 8 in the Delphi track, so I put the link, John, for you to the YouTube video. You can also 
uh, get to Code Rage Eight and find it. It's on the it's on the Thursday. Uh, Wagner Lang Landgraf. I'm not going to pronounce that correctly, am I? From TMS Software did a whole session on introducing TMS Aurelius, the Delphi object relational mapping framework. Okay, uh, those were the questions so far. Uh, we've got a couple more minutes with Bruno, although it's uh, coming up on uh, quarter to 9 p.m. in uh, in Central European time. Um, but uh, life goes on. So if you have any other quick questions to put in, um, you can. Okay, Bruno, thank you very much for doing the the Technology Partner Spotlight for this week, and we look forward to uh, even more great stuff from TMS. We'd love the support that you uh, do for VCL and FireMonkey. It's a lot of work, I know, especially FireMonkey as things uh, keep evolving and the platforms underneath us, iOS and so on, are evolving and Android. Uh, Apple especially seems to make it more exciting and interesting for us at the compiler level uh, and elsewhere. Uh, Victor saying, are there plans to remove the opacity of the thumb of the track bar? He's referring to um, our FireMonkey track bar. I understand that you want to have this opacity removed. Uh, so I will have to uh, sit together with Peter and uh, discuss that. But it might be helpful if you send a quick email reminder so uh, on Monday when we sit together, that uh, I'm sure that uh, this uh, does not get forgotten. Okay, Bruno. Thank you very much, and everybody, thank you. Thank you, Bruno, and your whole team. Thanks. Okay, thank you uh, for having us here, and uh, you're welcome. Thank you.